Hello and welcome to Empowered Learning. Uh, this video will show some examples of systems of linear equations uh, by graphing as well as by uh, substitution and elimination. We'll start off with one problem where we are wanting to solve the system of equations by graphing. And so simply all we need to do is to graph these two lines. Now both of these lines are given in what we call standard form. So since they're given in standard form, um, it's real easy for us to be able to figure out um, what the y-intercepts are. And so uh, we're going to use that when it's convenient for us. Um, if we don't use that, then we can always change these into slope-intercept form so that we can uh, use the y-intercept and then the slope to figure out uh, where another point is on the graph. So let's start off by just looking at our first equation here so we'll name this equation one name that equation two so for equation one um, here if we know that um, x is equal to zero then here uh, this will just leave negative four y is equal to negative one and so if we take uh, negative 4y equal to negative 1 and solve for y that's dividing both sides by negative 4 which should give us y equals 1 4 okay so that's one point that's on the graph if we let y equal 0 then of course that makes this term go away and now all we have is just x equals negative 1 okay now if we're looking here um, you'll note that we probably don't have a way to graph um, 0 1 fourth so we may want to find another point so in this instance um, what we can do is we can basically figure out what the slope of this particular line is and so uh, the slope of that would just be minus a over b where a is the number next to the x which is an understood one and b is the number that is next to the y of course and that would be a negative 4. And so a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so we have 1 4. So um, using the point 1 0 that we already know, we can find another point that is on the graph there. And so uh, we can do that just by going in and from the point negative 1 0 going up one unit into the right four units to find another point on that graph. And so that's what we'll do when we get to that point. For equation two, uh, this one will be a little easier for us here. We have 2x um, minus y equals 8. And here, let me, didn't really want to do that. So that's 2x minus y equals 8. So here, I know when x is equal to 0 here, I know that this term goes away and all I have is negative 8. Sorry, um, negative y is equal to 8. So that means y is negative 8. I also know when y is 0, then that means this term goes away. And I just have 2x equals 8. And in that case, I know x is equal to 4 if I divide both sides by 2. So for equation 2, I have a um, two points that I can draw. For equation one, uh, we found out that we probably just want to use the point negative one zero and then our slope of one fourth to find another point on our graph there. And so now what we need to do is click on um, enlarge this. So let me get out of drawing mode here. And I want to click on here and so for that first equation we need to draw a line we know that we had a point at negative one zero and we need to go up one unit and we need to go to the right four units so that's one unit two three four so we have that line for our next line um, remember we had the point uh, when x was 0, we had the point negative 8, so we had the point 0, negative 8. And we also knew that when 
y was 0, x was 4. So we're here. And so now you see that these two lines cross right here at this point. Uh, we don't know exactly what that point is, but we do know that that is where they intersect, and that is the point, or that is the purpose of this particular problem. So we'll just come in and check answer, and everything is good. So the next problem that we want to do is we want to solve um, this system of linear equations by the substitution method. So um, the problem that we did before we were solving by graphing, which is we just graph it and figure out where they intersect. This time we're actually going to use the substitution method, which says that I need to write one variable in terms of the other and then use that to substitute it into the next equation here. And so um, what I'm essentially doing is getting rid of one of the variables by writing one variable in terms of the other. Now for this example, um, it's easiest to work with the first equation and um, use the first equation to be able to rewrite it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let us rewrite x in terms of y. So here if I have x minus y equals negative 3, then here if I add y to both sides, then I know x is going to be equal to y minus 3. And so now I can take that and go into my second equation here. And everywhere where I see x, I'll replace it with y minus 3. So I'll have 5 times y minus 3 plus 3 times y is equal to negative 47. And so now all I need to do is solve for y. So that would be 15y, sorry, 5y minus 15 plus 3y is equal to negative 47. I combine like terms, 5y and 3y is 8y minus 15, and that is equal to a negative 47. And so now to solve for y, I just add 15 to both sides. That cancels to 0, and I just have 8y. And so here, um, if I take a negative 47 and add 15 to it here, I know that's the same as subtracting 15 from 47, but I just end up having um, uh, the answer be negative. Okay, So here this would be 2, 7 minus 5 is, is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, and of course that would be negative. And here we just divide both sides by 8, find y, and we see y is a negative 4. So now that we have that, we can take this value and plug it back into one of our original functions. Um, I think the easiest one to use would be the x minus y equals negative 3. And of course now I want to find x. And if you remember, x was just y minus 3 here. So if I was to add y to both sides here, I know that that is just y minus 3, and then I can just substitute in negative 4 for y. And I see that I get negative 7. So my answer here is that these two lines cross at the point um, negative 7, negative 4. So let's yeah, just kind of rewrite that over. x is negative 7, y is negative 4. So that's where these two intersect. All right, so let's go ahead and type that in now. Let's get out of uh, drawing mode. And here we know that there's going to be one solution to the system. And that's going to be at negative 7, negative 4. All right, let's move on to another problem. All right, so for this next problem here, what we want to do is uh, we want to make sure that we're trying to solve this by the method of elimination. So elimination is um, a little different. Um, in doing this, our goal here is to try to see uh, can we somehow get rid of either the x and the y, and we're going and we can do that by following three rules. So the first rule is we can interchange rows. Okay. And so what that means here is if I wanted to switch the places of these for some reason, then I could do that without changing the integrity of the problem. 
Second rule is I can um, multiply any non-zero constant by any one of these equations and uh, the equation will still be the same thing. So for instance, if I wanted to for some reason take the second equation and multiply both sides by a 2, then I would have something that looks like this. And of course that would be 2x minus 2y equals 10. And my new system would be this 2x minus 2y equals 10. And I would keep the old equation, x plus y is equal to negative 1. Um, that would also be in the system. And if I rewrote it that way, um, the system would still have the same solution. The third thing that I can do is that I can add um, any non-zero multiple of one equation to another. And so this is really the key here uh, to being able to use elimination. So uh, for instance, if I wanted to add these two equations together here, then I could just come here, add them, and I know x and x is 2x. I know that y minus y cancels to 0, and I know that negative 1 plus 5 is equal to 4. So I'm allowed to do that. <clears throat> now I'm going to erase here, and I've kind of let the cat out the bag here. Uh, we see that for this system here, if I chose to eliminate the y variable first, you notice if I added these two equations, um, I'm going to get <laughs> basically y um, eliminated and just have x. So just like how I'd said before here, x plus x is 2x. We know that plus y minus y is 0, and then that equals negative 1 plus 5, which is a positive 4. And if we divide both sides by 2, we see that we get x equals 2 here. And so now that we have that, we can use this x in one of the two original equations. And I'll just use it for x plus y equals negative 1 to figure out what y is. So if we substitute 2 for x equals y, and that's negative 1, then here I could subtract 2 from both sides. That cancels to 0, and I see that y is equal to negative 3. So in this case, we know that our system has an answer, which is uh, these two lines cross, and they cross at the point 2, negative 3. So that's what the answer to this would be. So let's go ahead and erase and let's type in our answer here. So I think I think what I had there was two negative three. Alright, so let's move on to another problem. Alright, so but before we do that, let's go ahead and finish this one. Um, we're going to choose the correct statement here. And so here this is an exercise in vocabulary. So whenever we say a system is consistent, like what you see here, what you're saying is, is that the system has at least one solution. Um, when you say that the equations are dependent, what you mean is that you had a duplicate of equations there. And you'll know if a system was dependent if you're doing the elimination method because you'll end up with something like uh, 0 equals 0 or 12 equals 12. Um, for one of your equations uh, once you start trying to do the elimination process. Um, a system that is inconsistent means that it does not have a solution at all. And of course, the only time that happens is whenever lines are parallel to one another. So if you have lines that are parallel, they will never cross, and thus they're inconsistent. Um, if the lines do cross, uh, we know that they're either going to cross once or they're going to cross an infinite amount of times. Okay, And so in this instance of the equations um, cross at exactly one point, um, you have an independent system and it is consistent. Okay, In this case you have a dependent system and uh, the <clears throat> And of course, the system is consistent. In this case, the system is inconsistent because they do not cross. 
but the equations are still independent of each other. So um, in looking at all that, if we look at what is being asked of us here, we know that this particular, these equations here crossed at exactly one point, so we know that the uh, system is consistent, so that means it's either A or B, and we know that the equations are independent from each other because we didn't have anything like 0 equals 0 or 12 equals 12, so we know that C has to be the answer there. Okay. All right, so now let's look at the next problem. So now what we want to do is use the elimination method um, to solve this, but now we're going to have to do a little more than just add the equations to be able to eliminate a variable. So um, in looking at this, if you look closely here, um, if we were able to have a 3 right there for that second term, then um, we would be able to add these equations and then get rid of the y variable. But of course, whenever we deal with equations, what we do to one side, we must do to the other. So if I need a positive 3, um, for the coefficient right here, I'm going to have to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 to make that happen. So because of that, our first equation is going to change uh, the way that it looks. So here, that's that. So that will end up being 15x plus 3y equals negative 6. And so our second equation, we'll just um, write that the same. So that would be 7x minus 3y, and that will equal a negative 38. And so now, via the process of elimination, I can add. We know that those go to 0. 15 plus 7 is 22, so that'll be 22x. And, of course, negative 6 minus 38 gives me a negative 44. So now, when I divide both sides by 22, I end up getting x equals negative 2. And so now that I know what x is, I can use this in one of my um, two equations here to figure out what y is. And again, I will probably use the 5x plus y equals negative 2 equation because it has less stuff in it. So I'll substitute in a negative 2 for x. Of course, uh, 5 times negative 2 is a negative 10 plus y equals a negative 2. So now we would have to add 10 to both sides there. Of course, that cancels, and that would be y equals 8. And so now we know uh, this system, two equations, they intersect each other at the point negative 2, 8. And I was trying to draw a parenthesis there, but that didn't work. So negative 2, 8 is where they cross. So we'll get rid of the drawing here. So this will be negative 2, 8. And then if we continue. We know that, again, the system is consistent and the equations are independent. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. All right, if we use the elimination method to solve this system here, um, you're going to see one of those other two cases. Um, either the equations are going to be parallel to one another, which means we don't have a solution at all, or the equations will be the exact same equation, and we'll have duplicates, and we'll have uh, a dependent system, which means we have infinitely many solutions. So here, if you look at the first equation and the second, you can tell that um, all the terms here uh, for the second equation here are twice the first. 
So this looks like a duplicate. So if we use elimination to solve this, um, you're going to see that we have two numbers that just equal each other, and that'll let you know that this answer here should be infinitely many solutions. Okay. So well, we know that. So um, to do this by elimination, you'll see that in order to make this happen here, I'll either need to make this 4 here a negative 8 or make this 5 here a negative 10. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by negative 2. And that didn't come out too nice, but um, we'll try that again. So we just multiply both of our equations by a negative 2. So it'll be 4x plus 5y. And that will equal 4 times negative 2. And here if we do that, we end up with a negative 8x minus 10y. And that equals a negative 8. And then we'll write this first equation down again. Have that. And if we add these equations together here, you'll see that we get 0, 0 equals 0. And so this is what tells you that you have infinitely many solutions because both of those equations are, were really the same equation. Um, they just were duplicates of each other. All right, so we'll erase everything, get out of drawing mode, and say that we had infinitely many solutions. All right, let's move to the next question. All right, so for this example, um, we see that if we're using the elimination method again, um, we're going to have to get something to, to work. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to come here and change this 6 that's right there to a negative 12. And to do that, I will have to multiply the bottom equation on both sides by a negative 2. So, um, in doing that, I will kind of rewrite this system here. Of course, second equation, I'll say let's multiply this by a negative 2, so that'll be 6x minus 5y and that'll be 4 times a negative 2 and that's not coming out too pretty and so if I do that then my second equation would be negative 12x plus 10y and that will be equal to a negative 8. And of course, the first equation would just be 12x minus 10y. And that will be equal to a positive 4. If I added these equations together, you'll see that I have 0, 0, but then over here, I end up having a negative 4. And of course, we know that 0 is really not equal to negative 4 here. So this is the funny business. And so <laughs> normally when we see this, um, we know that we have no solution to the system. And so these two equations here are lines that have the same slope, but a different y-intercept. And so they're, they're essentially parallel to one another. So because of that, we know that this answer here is no solution. Uh, they can't cross because they have the same slope. So get rid of the drawing here. Go ahead and answer no solution. And that's it. So um, you've seen examples of solving systems of linear equations in by graphing them, by doing elimination method as well as substitution method and you've also seen some examples of um, when systems are dependent meaning you have infinitely many solutions as well as when systems are are um, inconsistent um, meaning that they don't have any solutions 
okay? And I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions.